Hello guys and gals and welcome! So today we're going to be going over, as you can see above my head, super unique monsters. Now Diablo 2 is uh, has quite a large number of super unique monsters. And super unique monsters have some very interesting statistics, things that uh, allow them to be, well, very useful to the player. Um, and as we go over them today, we're going to talk about um, basically the individual things that you would get out of a super unique monster, why farming super unique monsters is a good thing, and um, on top of that, um, other interesting things like super unique monsters that were deleted. Um, without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so first off, let's go over the rules of super unique monsters and why super unique monsters have special stats over others. So, unique monsters that always spawn in the same location as well, kind of like unique bosses, but uh, have unique bonuses. So, basically, what this is is that um, every single super unique monster um, has a set spawn location, either a set spawn area or an exact place that they are located at. Finding them is usually pretty easy. Some of them are quest related, but most of them are not. Additional unique bonuses are randomly selected, as it is randomly selected, are randomly selected in Nightmare. Uh, two additional unique bonuses are selected in Hell Difficulty. Now, this is in addition to the additional unique bonus that they always have, and we'll go over that for each individual unique, super unique monster. Um, Ignore's target's defense only applies to minions. So if you are using Ignore's target's defense and you try to attack a uh, super unique monster, it does not work on the super unique monster, but it will work on the super unique monster's minions. Um, negative target's defense will work on the super unique monster, but only at half effectiveness. Um, so if you have 100% uh, negative target's defense, it will be 50% versus the super unique. However, it does still work at 100% effectiveness versus the minions. Uh, freeze length chills instead. So instead of freezing something solid, you're only going to chill it. Uh, the super uniques cannot be frozen. However, the minions can be frozen, so keep that in mind. Uh, stun length only has a 10% chance of being applied, but other than that, suffers no penalty. So if you're going to stun the super unique, say, for 10 seconds, um, you only have a 10% chance of actually stunning them. But uh, if you hit them enough times, they will get stunned. And if you hit them enough times repeatedly, they will stay stunned forever. Um, effects altering AI cannot be applied directly to super uniques, but can affect the minions. Um, this goes for things like hits blinds target, um, things like um, attract. Uh, there's a couple different curses in the game that alter the way that the AI works. And anything that is an AI altering ability does not work directly on the minions, um, including things like conversion, uh, mind blast, etc. Uh, life lost to crushing blow is halved, so one-eighth of current base life when applied by a melee attack and one-sixteenth when applied by a ranged attack. Uh, so basically you don't get full crushing blow on the actual super uniques. Um, it's normally much higher than that on, say for instance, the minions. Um, they do not regenerate damage. This is an interesting thing about super uniques, um, except for, of course, uh, you know, like bosses, which bosses do actually count as super uniques, but they're not technically in the same category because they have other things going on. Um, also, of course, Ubers are also in this category, uh, do regen. Uh, it's really kind of an oddity, um, mainly just the ones that are not bosses and don't have anything to do with any kind of specific quest. None of those will regenerate. Um, life drained by open wounds is halved, so open wounds is at half effectiveness on super uniques as well. Um, now that we've covered all the general rules for the super uniques, um, let's go over the super uniques themselves. We're going to be starting in normal difficulty, of course, and each one of these super uniques has a very specific location. Obviously, um, the beginning of the first super unique that you're ever going to encounter is going to be Corpse Fire. Corpse Fire is located in the Den of Evil, and uh, surprisingly, he is actually the only monster in the Den of Evil. So if you ever go into the Den of Evil that is... Um, and look around, you'll notice there's no other elites. There's regular monsters. There's tons of regular monsters in the Den of Evil. Um, you know, there's Fallen, there's little, little uh, you know, zombies, etc. But the thing that there is not is any monster that is technically um, what I would consider uh, 
a, a elite, a champion, a uh, a super unique monster, and I'm gonna take my uh, my Merc's weapon off because I don't want him to kill him. Um, and now in the future, when I uh, when I go to the next monster, I'm gonna pause it, and we're just gonna go straight there. But for this one in particular, I wanted to show off the fact that well, there's no elites in this entire zone. Most zones have many many elites in them as you go forward. Um, but this one in particular is just completely empty of elites. It's all regular monsters, with the exception of Corpse Fire himself, who is um, in the back. Now, because we're in Hell difficulty, Corpse Fire will have multiple enchantments. So as of right now, let me see if I can clear out some of this trash without hitting Corpse Fire. Uh, Corpse Fire is immune to cold. See, he's spectral hit, fire enchanted, and he's cursed, right? Well, he's always immune to cold. It's one of the things about Corpse Fire. So anytime you encounter Corpse Fire, he will always be immune to cold. He's always here, of course, because this is his particular place to be. Um, he is an undead. And uh, on top of this, he also rolls with two additional enchantments uh, on top of his cold immunity. Um, so as you can see with this particular one, um, Corpse Fire is various level depending on where you find him. So in normal difficulty, Corpse Fire is actually very low level. He's actually only level four, which is <laughs> which is pretty low considering that uh, you probably will end up being higher than level four by the time you fight him. Um, let me kill this guy over here real quick who is making my day painful. Um, and uh, and level in Nightmare difficulty, he is level thirty nine. Uh, and in Hell Difficulty, he is actually level 82, which is uh, which is pretty high. Um, 82 is high enough to drop most items in the game, so believe it or not, Corpse Fire can actually drop a large variety of items. Um, another thing about Super Uniques that I forgot to mention before we start going into showing them off one by one is that Super Uniques are very specifically always going to drop a certain number of items. So in Diablo 2, there is what is called a no-drop roll. Um, when you kill a monster, there is a chance that they will just simply drop nothing, okay? And because there is a chance that they will simply drop nothing, a lot of the times you can kill a monster and get nothing. However, super uniques are always guaranteed to drop two items. Now, you don't necessarily know what those two items are going to be, but they will always drop two. Um, and if I go ahead and kill him right now, you'll notice that he dropped me a Sacred Feathers and a Battle Cestus. So he's always going to drop two items. This is one of the things that you can take advantage of with Super Uniques. Um, and before we get into quickly showing off each individual Super Unique, it's important to note this. So in Player's 1 difficulty, which is basically you by yourself, you have the lowest drop odds essentially in the game. Um, your no drop roll is very high, which means that there's a very good chance that nothing will fall on the ground. And when you kill a monster, um, a regular monster that is, there's a very good chance you just get nothing. However, the super uniques represent an interesting conundrum here, which is basically where, you know, well, maybe I will get something, right? See, that zombie dropped me nothing. That one dropped me gold. And let's see here. Let's just kill a couple of these guys real quick. And we got gold from him. Oh, nothing dropped from him. Nothing. 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 Um, and this is one of the downsides of magic finding in Players 1. Is that when you're trying to look for items, when you're trying to get yourself some good equipment, when you're trying to make your character, um, you know, find items, it doesn't help that a lot of the times the monsters will drop you nothing. Um, this is an issue with specifically the kind of like terrible nature of the no drop roll, which essentially is just you being shoved under the bus. So super uniques represent an interesting option, which is in players one where you have the worst no drop roll, there is still monsters that you can kill that will guarantee drop at least two items. Um, so when you hear people talking about farming a specific super unique, um, and there are tons of super uniques, and as we go over them in this video today, you're gonna find that there are all probably a lot more than you even thought. Um, farming those super uniques means that you are gonna end up with better drops in a lower player count. 
Now, farming the super uniques in a higher player count doesn't necessarily give you better drops because they are guaranteed to drop two items no matter what. However, farming the super uniques in a higher player count doesn't necessarily hurt anything either. Um, you know, you obviously you're not going to necessarily have a bad time farming super uniques in a higher player count because in general, the rest of the monsters are going to drop more loot. So keep this in mind is that, yes, farming super uniques in a low player count is definitely good, um, but farming them in a high player count doesn't hurt because the minions and everything around them that you're going to be killing is also going to have a higher drop for being in a higher player count. And, um, and you might be wondering what those numbers are. Well, it's really easy to actually remember because it's the odds and evens. So... Um, when it comes to player count, um, you're looking at players 7 is the highest um, for no drop rolls, essentially to, to reduce the number of no drop rolls to its lowest amount. So it's 1, 3, 5, 7. Right? Those are your those are your magic numbers, and if you're in players seven, that is your best magic find uh, number, uh, because it lowers the no drop rolls to the lowest possible amount that you can get. Now let's move on to the next super unique monster. All right. The next one on the list is uh, a Bishi Boss. Now Bishi Boss has some interesting uh, trivia behind it. He's actually named after um, one of the Diablo uh, forum moderators, from what I remember. And uh, Bishi Boss is always located in cold plains. However, unlike some of the other mercenary or other uh, super uniques, he's not always in a set location, but he is always at a camp. Uh, Bishop Boss also has some very interesting things about him. Most notably is the fact that he can actually resurrect other super unique um, or other regular shamans from the dead. So when you find uh, Bishop Boss, which Bishop Boss is right here, um, one of the things that you'll notice is that if you kill another shaman, uh, about, I don't think the elite one counts, but if you kill one of these shamans, for instance, notice he can pop that shaman back up from the dead. Uh, Bishibosh can be particularly nasty in Hell Difficulty because if you're not particularly prepared for the fact that he can resurrect all of the fallen shamans, things can get kind of nasty. Bishibosh is always immune to fire, um, and he can be immune to other elements depending, of course, whether or not he, um, well, I'm trying to think how to, how to put it. Uh, I just murdered him. Uh, depending or not whether or not he is uh, has other modifiers. So if he has cold enchantment, um, if he has things like lightning enchantment and so forth and so on, he can be immune to other elements. Um, on top of this, in normal difficulty, he is level 5. In nightmare difficulty, he is level 39. And in hell difficulty, he is level 71. Uh, so not quite as high of level as Corpse Fire is. Corpse Fire is actually much higher level for some reason. At level 82, it, it, he can drop a large variety of items within the game. However, Bishibosh can't quite drop everything. Um, for resistances, um, Bishibosh actually does have some pretty decent res. He's, in Hell Difficulty, he's literally sitting at 175% fire res. Uh, he has uh, 40 cold, 40 lightning, and 60, uh, 66 drain effectiveness, which is kind of a whole thing. Drain effectiveness is basically the um, life leech ability of a target, uh, which basically means that anytime you go to hit him, you're going to take a penalty of about 33% to the drain effectiveness of that target. Uh, moving on to the next target um, that is located actually in Cold Plains as well um, is Cold Crow. The Cold Crow is located within the cave level one, which is inside Cold Plains. Cold Crow has some very interesting things about her. Um, first off, she is always cold enchanted. Every single time you find Cold Crow, she is always cold enchanted. Um, on top of that, um, she is also one of the best targets in the game to actually farm a Gull Dagger from. Um, because of the fact that she is the perfect level, which is level 7, um, she actually has the ability to drop Gull Dagger well, at the highest frequency out of every single monster within the game. And in fact, she's actually very good at dropping pretty much all TC3 class items, which are actually very low-level uniques. Um, she's level 39 in Nightmare Difficulty, and she's level 80 in uh, 
Hell difficulty. And um, she's also immune to lightning in Hell difficulty as well, uh, which is a, kind of a pain in the butt. If you find her at a relatively low level, you will come across an issue with her being cold enchanted because more often than not, your character does not have cold immunity or rather uh, cannot be frozen at a really early level. And so when you try to fight her um, at a very early level, you're going to end up permanently chilled because she is cold enchanted and because she is cold enchanted all of her minions are cold enchanted too so keep that in mind as well and it does cause a, a little bit of an issue um, when killing her at an early level however later on you'll find that most of the time she's pretty easy to kill um, despite the fact that she's always cold enchanted and always cold immune she does roll with two other modifiers, and if she does end up with extra strong and aura enchanted with something like might or fanaticism, you can have a particularly nasty time with her. But other than that, um, she's actually pretty surprisingly easy to kill. Um, notably is that she's really just a good farming target early on for that gull dagger if you want to get your hands on it. Um, let's move on to the next on the list. The next on the list is Blood Raven. Blood Raven is kind of a quest monster, but she's also a super unique as well. And uh, she can be killed for the same kind of loot that most of the other super uniques can be killed for. Uh, Blood Raven is unique in that she's actually supposed to be the rogue from Diablo 1. So if you ever played Diablo 1 and uh, you played the rogue, well, this is basically what happened to the rogue. Is she turned into a, an evil snarling beast of, of, uh, of hoochiness? Because if you zoom in on her, it looks like she's wearing like a blood thong or something. I don't know what's going on. Try not to kill her before, uh, before she, uh, before she does. But uh, she is uh, basically a, a super unique that spawns an infinite number of zombies. If you can't deal with the zombies, you might have trouble. Um, as you can clearly tell, she's not exactly a nice person, as you can see from the dead rogues hanging from the tree. Um, she's yeah, she's not she's not a very nice lady. Um, on top of this, she can be sometimes difficult to kill, uh, depending on what kind of character you are. Melee, in particular, tend to have a lot of issues with her because she just loves to run around and she never wants to stand still. Um, one of the things that you'll find out about her is that she absolutely loves to kite. She doesn't want to stand still for like eh, any period of time. And uh, usually if you can get her stuck into a corner or something, that's your best bet. Um, but um, as you're trying to kill her, she will inevitably summon more monsters to surround you and also usually um, run away in the process, making it a little bit more difficult to kill her. She does, however, drop the standard two loot items that most monsters drop. And um, as you can see here, she dropped me an Ethrune and an Ancient Sword. Um, she has some fancy graphics when you kill her, obviously, because she was, you know, doing some dark magics or whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's, it's the same thing in the old graphics as well. Um, all in all, uh, Blood Raven is a pretty easy one to get to, but I don't necessarily like doing this one because you do have to uh, find the burial grounds each time you do a run, unless it's single player. Um, which is a different story. Um, however, if you're going to be doing Blood Raven, uh, as we move on to the next Super Unique, um, we're going to be talking about the next one, which is Bonebreaker. Um, but before we talk about Bonebreaker, let's talk about uh, the level of the Countess. Or sorry, not the Countess, Blood Raven. Blood Raven is level 10 in normal difficulty. She is level 43 in nightmare difficulty, and she is level 88 in hell difficulty. Um, she does not have her own static modifier, though, which is actually kind of interesting. Um, all the other super uniques have a static modifier, and I think that's because Blood Raven is technically considered a boss, um, even though she's not really a boss. I guess you could say she's the first boss of Act 1. Um... Moving on, we have the next one on the list, which is Bonebreaker. Bonebreaker is actually a pretty good one for farming early when you are a very low-level character. Bonebreaker is always in the chest room of this particular zone that we're in right now, which is the crypt. So if you're in the burial grounds, you're going to notice that there's two little uh, crypts and mausoleums and things. Uh, one of them is called the mausoleum. That's not the one you want. Uh, the one you want is the one that is called the crypt. And what you're going to be looking for in the crypt is you're just going to be looking for the the, the chest room, basically. Um, because he's always in the chest room of the crypt. Um, so if you go down here and you just kind of run around until you find the glowy room, which is basically all it really takes, because obviously the chest is always the shiny, glowy room, you will find a Bonebreaker. Uh, Bonebreaker is a skeleton. 
Um, and uh, Bonebreaker has, well, he's got a special modifier of his own. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, he is always lightning immune in Hell difficulty, but he's not lightning immune in the lower difficulties. And I'm trying to make sure I don't accidentally kill him. But, let's see, let me, uh, at the door here. Where are you at, Bonebreaker? There he is. As you can see, he's extra strong, magic resistant, aura enchanted. Um, and Bonebreaker always guards the special chest in this particular zone. In level, I mean, in normal difficulty, he is level 5. In nightmare difficulty, he is level 40. And in hell difficulty, he's actually level 86. Which makes him one level shy of being able to drop TC87 items, which is unfortunate. Um, however, in normal difficulty, I have noticed that he has a tendency to drop some pretty nice TC3 class items, and is a pretty good early farm for a lot of characters in terms of just, you know, getting some decent loot. If you're already here to kill Bloodraven, it's always a good idea to just run down here real quick and kill Bonebreaker. As you can see, he dropped a blue Shaco. Um, and uh, also click on the Super Chest, which uh, is going to give you, you know, something. Uh, moving on to the next target on the list is a, uh, a favorite. And that is Rakanishu. Rakanishu is always guarding the Karen Stones. He is a monster that is always lightning enchanted, and um, he actually, believe it or not, in Hell Difficulty, has the highest possible drop chance for the Harlequin Crest Shaco. That's right. Um, in Normal Difficulty, though, he is an absolute slayer of freaking beasts, and it really comes down to the fact that he is just uh, always lightning enchanted. Um, when you are Normal Difficulty and you're first starting your character, Rocket Issue is likely to kill you if you're not prepared for the fact that he has lightning enchantment because a lot of the times you'll go up to him you'll start wailing on him and the lightning will start coming out of him and well it's not exactly very pleasant for newer characters who have zero percent lightning resistance um rocket issue is only level eight in normal difficulty he is level 40 in nightmare difficulty and he is level 71 in hell difficulty um, like i said he is actually the perfect level for dropping Harlequin Crest Shaco, and if you pull it up on Silo's pen, um, you'll see that he has very, very good drop odds for that particular item. Um, he does have a particularly high fire resistance, and most of the time he will be immune to fire in uh, normal in Hell difficulty. Um, he may not be immune to fire in Nightmare or Normal, but if he rolls with fire enchanted, he definitely will. Um, as you can see, though, that despite being lightning enchanted, he is not immune to lightning because his lightning resistance really isn't quite high enough, um, which is part of the issue. Um, every time you hit him, of course, he's going to put out lightning bolts, but at a certain point, you can hit him hard enough in P1 that you can pretty much kill him in one hit. Um, moving on to the next monster on the list, um, we're going to go, obviously, straight into the portal here because, well, this Rakanishu is right next to the portal that goes to Griswold. Griswold is a throwback from Diablo 1 in that, well, he didn't exist, essentially, in... Um, the game anymore, but they kind of turned him into a zombie. He's a he's a zombie now uh, because Tristram got taken over, and uh, you know la la di da di da. Poor Griswold, and he got murdered. Um, so if you come down here, Griswold is always usually right around this place. In fact, let me clear out a couple of this some of this trash since he's not precisely here. Um, he doesn't have an exact spawn location, but he usually is centered around this building. So if you circle this building, you will usually find him somewhere around this point. Now, the one thing that Griswold has is he is always cursed. Cursed means that he will apply that nasty, nasty curse to you. And in many cases, believe it or not, Griswold can seem like a pushover, up until the point where he curses you and then donks you in the head for a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, one thing is that, uh, especially since he's usually surrounded by several unique, or sorry, uh, elite monsters, is that uh, you will often find that Griswold is beefed up by other auras that they may have. Um, in this particular case, Griswold is Cursed Extra Fast or Enchanted, and he has the um, Blessed Aim aura, which is actually good for me, because if he had Fanaticism or Might, I might be in trouble. Um, 
he is not normally very fast, but because he has the extra fast enchantment, you can see he actually is a pretty swift Griswold. Normally you will find that he is actually quite slow, like uh, a traditional zombie that is just, you know, just, just lumbering around. Now, uh, Griswold has been a source of quite a few good items for me. I found Ravenfrost on him a couple times during ladder resets and uh, some other various good pieces of equipment. Um, in normal difficulty, he has a monster level of 5. In nightmare difficulty, he has a monster to a level of 39. And in hell difficulty, he has a monster level of 84. Um, which means that he can drop pretty much all the items in the game with the exception of the TC87 items, which is kind of uh, unique. Um, obviously, he is an undead monster, so he is particularly vulnerable to undead effects. Um, the Cursed Aura does make him a little bit of a pain in the butt, though, in my opinion. Um, he is always immune to poison and hell difficulty, but he has no immunities otherwise. And drain effectiveness on him um, does go down to 66 in uh, hell difficulty. So you do have a 33% drain penalty on him, which can sometimes make him a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, let's take a look at this charm real quick. Boo. I am now, next on the list is, um, I believe... Treehead Woodfist. Now, Treehead Woodfist is always located at the Tree of Inifus, and he's likely going to kill me if I'm not careful here. Um, he hits pretty hard because he has, of course, a, um, a brute, and he does come with several minions, as you can clearly see. Ow, 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 ow. Rude. 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 Of course he's amped. Now, Treehead Woodfest is uh, always protecting the tree, which means he is in a specific location. But because the tree moves around, Treehead Woodfist moves around with the tree. And uh, and that is rather unfortunate. I didn't mean to kill him. Um, but uh, Treehead Woodfist is actually uh, rather high level. Um, he is a level 5 for normal difficulty. He's level 41 in Nightmare difficulty. And he's level 71 in Hell difficulty, which makes him another very good choice for farming your Harley Quinn Crash Shaco. Um, because he's the same level as Rock and Issue. Um, I believe he has slightly worse drop odds, though, than Rock and Issue, and I'm not exactly sure why. Um, he's always immune to cold difficulty because he is a brute, and brutes are always immune to cold. Um, on top of this, um, he is also... I'm trying to remember his, uh, his modifier. Uh, extra strong... Uh, two, 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 two. Let's see here. I think it's extra strong, extra fast. I believe he is always extra strong, extra fast, which is his modifier. Which is kind of a pain in the butt whenever you find him. In fact, um, I didn't, really didn't mean to kill him. So let me pause it, and I will uh, come right back, and let's see if we can uh, find him again. All right, here he is again. I mean, as you can see, he's extra strong, extra fast this time as well, which makes him particularly nasty, especially if he rolls with an aura, like, uh, for instance, or Cursed, or both, if he has Cursed and, say, Fanaticism or Might. Um, he can hit pretty darn hard, and uh, it can get pretty nasty. Um, Treehead Woodfist, like I said, does move around because the tree moves around, but he is always located at the tree, and he is always in dark wood. Um, other than that, though, I mean, he's not really particularly difficult to kill. Sometimes he can overwhelm characters that might not necessarily be prepared um, for getting rushed, basically, by Treehead Woodfist. And he is immune to cold, which does make it a little bit hard to kite him for, like, the cold ca damage characters. Um, but for the most part, if you have your defenses high enough um, and you are, you know, not a wimp, you can usually take on Treehead Woodfist head-on and not really worry about it too much. Uh, although, if your defenses are not very good, then uh, you might want to watch out. Let's move on to the next super unique on the list. And that is the Countess. Now, the first thing I want to show you is that uh, normally, and this is not always, but normally the Countess's tower is almost always located somewhere very close to the waypoint. As you can see in this particular case, the waypoint is literally right next to the building, to the point where I can literally show you the waypoint and the Countess tower at the same time. Now, when you go down to the Countess, um, one of the things that you want to note is that it's actually pretty easy to find your way through Countess's Tower um, because the entrances are usually always in a rotation from the last entrance that you went from. I believe it's, um, what is it, uh, counterclockwise or is it clockwise? I can't remember. But usually the 
entrance to the next level is in a direct correspondence to the previous entrance to the level. And as you start to figure it out, you will know exactly where to go to get to the um, to the next level. Now, me in particular here, I tried to go counterclockwise because that's what I remembered. But I think it might have been clockwise, which is the other direction. Now, it doesn't always work, though. And this has been my personal experience, is that despite the fact that it works a lot of the times it doesn't always work and uh, not really sure what to do about it from that but if we take a look at the map right here you'll notice that the entrance is here and the next entrance is on this side which means that if you were to use this as a clock face you could go like this it's it is clockwise from the door um, it's, it ends up being very simple like that, surprisingly so. Um, and a lot of the times you'll notice that the entrance is actually so close to the, the, the place where you came down that you really don't have to do much at all in terms of getting there. Um, and a, a lot of the times you can actually get Countess maps that are so ridiculously easy that you can actually see the entrance from where you walk in immediately. It's not always the case, but it is mm, a lot of the times the case. Now, um, I'm not going to take you directly to the Countess just yet because we have a lot to talk about when it comes to the Countess. The Countess is more than just a regular super unique monster. Um, she is a optional boss. She obviously doesn't need to be killed, but because she is set up specifically for rune dropping, um, there is a whole lot going on with her in terms of how her drops work. And um, even I get confused on it sometimes. It also has a, a lot of weird components in how it is dealt with in different player counts. For instance, the Countess actually has worse player drops in Players 8 than she does in Players 1. Um, for some reason, her rune drop table is negatively affected by the player count. And this player count um, will cause basically her to drop like no runes whatsoever. Now, once you get a tower cell level five, um, you get two little, uh, little 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 rooms on either side here that have loot in them. Obviously, there's chests, there's gold all over the place, and they're honestly they're worth clicking on because there's like some weapon racks and armor racks in there, and you can get some pretty good bases and various items on there. Once you get in here, she obviously um, will hit you with that classic line. If I can get her to say it. Um, or here for a bloodbath. Um, she also says that one. Um, now, the Countess is always immune to cold damage, which is kind of unfortunate for people who might want to farm her. And in Hell Difficulty, she's actually immune to fire damage as well. Um, although she might not be immune to cold damage in lower difficulties. Um, when you kill her, you get like a big spouty thing. And if it's the first time you kill her, you get like special loot from this chest right here. But for the most part, um, she's not particularly all that difficult to kill, in my opinion. Um, you will notice that at the entrances here, though, there are firewalls. Do be careful not to stand in the firewalls, especially if you have relatively low fire resistance. Um, that can be definitely a pain in the butt. Now, when you kill her um, in normal difficulty, she can drop up to a Ral rune. Uh, when you kill her in nightmare difficulty, she can drop up to a Ko rune, although you can get very rarely an Io rune. And in hell difficulty, she can drop up to a low rune very rarely. Um, but normally, it's just simply um, an Ist rune up to an Ist rune. She has two separate drop tables is basically what's going on. She has a special drop table, and she has a rune drop table. And from the rune drop table, she can drop a specific number of runes. And then from her special drops, she has the ability to drop higher than that. Um, but rather ironically is that the fact that she can drop up to a low rune is kind of funny because the ghosts and things like that in her area can actually drop higher than a low rune. Um, it's actually kind of silly that the monsters in her area can actually drop more, mo, mo better runes than she can drop herself. Now, in normal difficulty, she is level 11. In nightmare difficulty, she is level 45. And in hell difficulty, she is level 82. Um, so keep this in mind. Um, as for the Countess specifically and the way that her drops function, it is so silly sometimes to go over um, exactly what she will drop and when she will drop it. Sometimes she is very stingy. 
Um, there is also another item that she can potentially drop that uh, she did not drop for me right now, and that is the Key of Terror. Um, there are three super uniques within the game that can drop keys. The keys are used to open up the uber portals, and the Countess is one of those monsters that can drop a very specific uber key. She drops the Key of Terror. The Key of Terror is generally one of the least valued keys of the lot because most people farm the Countess for runes, so it's not really like a big deal. Um, the summoner key is more of a pain in the get, a butt to get, and that is the hate key. And the um, destruction key comes from Neelithak, which is usually considered one of the more difficult ones, but in my opinion, it's one of the easiest ones to get to. It's just a little bit difficult to deal with because, of course, he has corpse explosion. Anyway, moving on to the next super unique on the list, um, and that is... The Smith. Um, the Smith is located within the barracks. And uh, let's go over there to the barracks right now. Now, the Smith is known for um, saying things like, I'll make weapons from your bones. He is also guarding the Herodric Malice, which if you haven't done that quest yet, you will have to... Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, you'll have to get the Herodric Malice. He's always located at this particular smithy. However, he's not always located in the same place because the smithy changes places within the barracks. So depending on where the smith is in the barracks, you might not necessarily find him. Now, it's pretty much been rumored that the smith was kind of like a butcher runoff. That the butcher was so popular in Diablo 1 that they wanted to make a character similar to the butcher in Diablo 2, and they ended up with the smith. Um, the Smith is not a particularly strong monster in terms of, like, damage output, and most of the time I think I pretty much kill him with relative ease. As you can also see, in Hell difficulty even, he does not have an immunity. So, okay. Um, in, le in Normal difficulty, he is level 13. In Nightmare difficulty, he is level 43. And in Hell difficulty, he is level 73. Um, honestly, not exactly the hardest monster in the game to kill. As you can see, um, he is always extra strong, though, so do be aware that if he were to roll, say, extra fast, cursed, and say maybe an aura, like a might aura or fanaticism aura, he might rock your socks. Um, but it's few and far between for him to roll those specific modifiers. Uh, let's move on to the next monster, and this one's going to be a little bit harder to find because he is located within the jail, and his name is... Pit Spawn Foul Dog. Uh, Pit Spawn Foul Dog is actually a monster that kind of doesn't belong in the area that he's in, and oftentimes he will kind of surprise you because normally when you're going through jail, you see ghosts, you see skeletons, um, you see quite a few various monsters in there, but Pit Spawn Foul Dog is not a ghost or a skeleton. He is actually a Tainted, one of those monsters that shoots lightning balls at you. And it can sometimes be quite a surprise when you come across him randomly because, well, those monsters are nasty in Hell Difficulty. Now, here he is, and uh, it's been my experience with Pit Spawn Foul, Foul Dog that he always tends to spawn in this, this weird little double room here. If you notice on the mini-map... Um, I have these two rectangular rooms. One of them has a door and one of them doesn't. He's usually in the side that does not have a door. Um, and he, of course, has minions. Um, he fires off lots of those little evil bolts that nobody likes. Uh, he's always cursed and he's always cold enchanted, which means that uh, he's usually per particularly nasty. Uh, Pit Spawn Foul Dog, as you can see in this particular case, is multi-shot, which is just... just I, I hate when I find tainted that are multi-shot. Um, one of the things that you may not know about the attack that he's firing is that it is not just lightning damage, it is also cold damage. A lot of people don't know this about that crazy lightning orb thing that he fires, but if you kind of look at it, if you kind of pay attention to it, you'll notice that it's lightning, but it's also surrounded by a core, and the core that it's surrounded by is actually cold. So it actually does lightning and cold damage, um, and it's one of the reasons why that stupid skill is so nasty. Um, it's just... just blah, 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 blah. As you can see, he's ripping me to shreds. Um, 
if you encounter him as you're running through on hell and you don't expect him to be there, sometimes it can be a pretty much a pain in the butt. Um, he kind of ambushes you, and as you can clearly see, and when he runs multi-shot and things like that that are even more nasty than normal, um, it just doesn't really go very well. Oh, wow, a plus one poison and bone with uh, five dexterity. That's a nice find. We're going to make a block. A block necromancer. Which, uh, making a block necromancer is not exactly a terrible thing. Um, Pitspawn Faldog, though, is very difficult to farm because of his location. Being on jail level 2, there is no easy access to him, and um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to actually even get to him at all, which is kind of the whole thing. Uh, let's move on to the next monster on the list, uh, Super Unique Monster. Uh, actually, I forgot to tell you his levels. So in normal difficulty, he is level 14. In nightmare difficulty, he is level 44. And in hell difficulty, he is level 74. Um, and in hell difficulty, he is always immune to lightning. So keep that in mind. Uh, the next one on the list is actually one that doesn't exist anymore. And I can't really show him to you. Um, but I can show you a picture of him from the past. Um, and this is a monster named Flame Spike the Crawler. Flame Spike the Crawler used to exist. Um, he was actually notorious for killing people uh, because he was a spike fiend. As you can clearly see, one of those evil quill rats. He uh, always was at one particular waypoint. And what particular waypoint is that? The inner cloister waypoint. And what would happen is, is when you would port in to the inner cloister waypoint, he would be there waiting for you. Uh, more often than not, trying to kill you and eat your face. He was always cursed, um, and this was kind of a nasty effect. He was also fire enchanted as well, which was even worse. And oftentimes what would happen is, is even if you uh, uh, didn't kill him, your mercenary might kill him, and then he would explode and kill you with the fire enchantment. He would often curse you before you loaded in, and there was often many times where he would kill you before you actually loaded in. And the developers thought, you know, wisely against having... A, a monster like this sitting on the waypoint, uh, basically just murdering people. I don't even know how many freaking hardcore characters he probably murdered over the years. Um, but he is a ganking ganker. So he got removed in the um, Lord of Destruction update. So the only people that remember him from back in the day are those of us who got ganked by him before he was removed. Um, he is level 12 in normal difficulty, level 44 in nightmare difficulty, and level 75 in hell. Um, and just na a nasty pain in the butt, to be perfectly honest. Uh, let's move on to the next one on the list, um, and this one is Bone Ash. Bone Ash is actually the last one that you can get to normally. And Bone Ash is always located in the cathedral, um, in Inner Cloister Waypoint. Um, and if you go to the throne, he is always centered around the throne somewhere. Um, as you can see right now, he's over here. Um, Bone Ash is always extra strong. He is always cold enchanted, and he's always magic resistant. Um, and as you can see, I literally just absolutely murdered him with ease. He's not a particularly tough monster to fight. He does have kind of a nasty poison, though. So do be aware that Bone Ash does use some pretty nasty poison attacks. And um, other than that, he's really not a ridiculously hard monster to kill. Um, and as you can clearly see, he's not a ridiculously hard monster to find. And because of this, he's actually a pretty easy super unique to farm at early levels. Um, he is level 17 in normal difficulty, which is pretty good. Um, he is level 45 in nightmare difficulty, and he is level 75 in hell difficulty, which means he can, in fact, drop you a Harlequin Crest Shaco, among other some very nice items. Um, Bone Flesh, or Bone Ash, is just one of the easier monsters in the game to farm, super unique-wise. If you're on a super unique hunt, what a lot of people will do is they will run, say, Rock and Issue. Um, they'll run Treehead Woodfist, they go kill Bone Ash. Um, it's a nice little combination, a little 1-2-3 combination, and it works out pretty well. And since Bone Ash is located right next to a waypoint, since Rock and Ishu is located usually right next to the waypoint, and Treehead Woodfish is located right next to the waypoint, it's a pretty easy 3 super unique farm for normal difficulty. And of course, there are better super uniques to farm, but the thing is, is if you're in normal difficulty in Hell and you really don't have access to the rest of Hell difficulty yet, um, 
these are just really easy ones that you can farm really early on. Now, the last one on the list does require a little bit of legwork. You can't just teleport directly to him, and that's because you have to go and get Wirt's leg. Without Wirt's leg, you can't go to the Cow King. Now, the Cow King is a very interesting one because the Cow King is a super unique that also has an extremely high drop chance for basically all set items. Um, I don't know why specifically the Cow King is such a prolific dropper of set items, but he is. And um, to get to him, you have to obviously uh, grab the Wurtz leg, and uh, you're going to have to create a game in Hell Difficulty, Nightmare, or Normal, where you've already beated, beaten Bale. Um, you don't actually have to have beaten Bale when you create the portal. You just, um, or when you create the game, you just have to have beaten Bale when you create the portal. Uh, this is this is a little bit of a difference here. So in, in the case where, for instance, let's say you were in normal difficulty and you finally have killed Bale, you can just go right back to normal uh, difficulty act one and you can create the portal. Right um, now, unfortunately, when it comes to creating the portal, um, you really can't get access to this guy until after you've killed Bale, or until somebody else perhaps um, has the ability to open the portal for you. This is also a good thing. So if you are, say, in a group and somebody else has killed Hell Bale, well, then they can open the portal for you. Now, the cow level is an absolutely great place to go for a lot of things. But um, on top of this, the Cow King itself is really the focus. Now, when you go through the portal, a lot of the times, believe it or not, the Cow King will literally be right there at the portal. Um, it's often rare that you won't find his pen, that's what I call it, um, his pen nearby. Um, and when you get here, you're going to get mobbed by cows. Uh, but inside the Cow King's portal, or the Cow King's pen, is the Cow King himself, which is right here. The Cow King is always lightning enchanted, and he is always immune to lightning, um, and he does roll with other such effects. Um, he is not a demon, he is not undead, so he's unaffected completely by my holy vault. He's also unaffected completely by the, um, <laughs> by the freaking, uh, just, 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 uh, 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 uh. Freaking holy freeze. How did I, why did I have to get a holy freeze, Cow King? Um, in general, though, you can kill the Cow King relatively easily, um, even when you're surrounded by tons of monsters. It's pretty much just a matter of picking on him. And, uh, I can kill him. It just takes me a couple swings of the shield. And bam. As you can see, he drops a lot of items, though. He also drops stamina potions for some odd reason, which he's also a male cow. And I'm not sure if you know this, but cows don't give milk. So despite the fact that the stamina potions are white, I have a feeling that that is not indeed milk. Um, and uh, he also drops more than two items. Unlike the other super uniques that only drop two items, you notice he dropped one, two, three, four, five items. Um, he also dropped a slew of stamina potions. Um, the Cow King is an odd one. He's very good to farm for a lot of things. Set items in particular, if you're looking for set items, he is a prolific dropper of set items in Normal Nightmare and Hill Difficulty. Um, on top of this, he also has a tendency to drop rares, um, uniques, uh, sets, and uh, I've even seen him drop the odd rune or two. He just seems to be specifically designed for that purpose. Now, back in the original version of the game in Diablo 2 LOD, if you killed the Cow King, you would lose access to the Cow Portal and never be able to create the Cow King portal again unless you made a new character and defeated Bale again on a different character. However, in Diablo 2 Resurrected they changed this so that you no longer have to worry about killing the Cow King and losing access to the portal. Now, because this video is already 48 minutes long, we are going to separate out the Super Unique videos into acts, and this one is currently finished. Um, with the Cow King uh, being the last one on the list. Now, speaking of the Cow King, uh, I need to go over one more thing with the Cow King, which is the Cow King's level. And uh, I don't know why I don't have that right here. Uh, where's his stats? Um, he's always magic resistant. He is always lightning enchanted. And on top of this, he should be level 80. I believe he's level 81. Well, let me just double check real quick. I have an infinite array of things at my disposal. Uh, 
Uh, he is level 84 in uh, in hell difficulty. Um, that is pretty good, actually. He can drop most items in uh, all, all the runes, and he can drop most items. He's only missing the TC87 stuff, which is not bad. Um, in Nightmare difficulty, he is uh, level 67, which is not bad. And in uh, Normal difficulty, he is level 31. Um, it's also important to note that in Normal difficulty, uh, a lot of people love to farm the cow level, specifically to get those... Uh, four socket crystal swords and broadswords and things for their spirits. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when I'm just talking about super uniques, and I hope you will join me for the Act 2 portion of this, where we go over the super uniques from Act 2. And as always, thanks for watching, and uh, keep watching.